sit back, relax, and enjoy yet another story time with Double O Kills. This time we're reading The Owl at Home by Arnold, Arnold Lobel. Lobel? Lobel? Lobel. And I can read book. By Harper Collins Publishing. Or publishers, at least. And on the inside it says For Grandma. Can't say no to that. Can't say no to that. So you're gonna read the guest. <clears throat> Al was at home. How good it feels to be sitting by this fire, said Al. It's so cold and snowy outside. Al was eating buttered toast and hot pea soup for supper. Al heard a loud sound at the front door. Who is out there banging and pounding on my door on a night like this, he said. Al opened the door. No one was there. Only the snow and the wind. Al sat near the fire again. There was another loud noise at the door. Who can it be? said Al, knocking and thumping at my door on a night like this. Al opened the door. No one was there. Only the snow and the cold. The poor old winter is knocking at my door, said Al. Perhaps it wants to sit by the fire. Well, I'll be kind and let the winter come in. Al opened the door very wide. Come in, winter, said Al. Come in and warm yourself for a while. Hey, have a good night, Doss. And have a good day at work tomorrow and happy new years, my friend. Winter came into the house. It came in very fast. A cold wind pushed an owl against the wall. Winter ran around the room. It blew out the fire in the fireplace. The snow whirled up the stairs and whooshed down the hallway. Winter, cried Owl, you are my guest. This is no way to behave. But Winter did not listen. It made the window shades flap and shiver. It turned the pea soup into hard green ice. Winter went into all the rooms of Owl's house. Soon everything was covered with snow. You must go, Winter, shouted Owl. Go away right now. The wind blew around and around. The Winter rushed out and slammed the front door. Goodbye, called Owl, and do not come back. My, Owl made a new fire in the fireplace. The room became warm again. The snow melted away. The hard green ice turned back into soft pea soup. Owl sat down in his chair and quietly finished his supper. The end. All right, here we get to the next one here. <clears throat> You're in luck, guys. It's got uh, it's got five stories. So <sighs> let's go. Al was in bed. It is time to blow out the candle and go to sleep, he said with a yawn. Then Al saw two bumps under the blanket at the bottom of his bed. What can those two strange bumps be? asked Al. Al lifted up the blanket. He looked down into the bed and all he could see was darkness. Owl tried to sleep, but he could not. What if those two strange pumps grow bigger and bigger while I am asleep? Said Owl. Oh, that would not be pleasant. Okay, you cannot look at that and tell me it doesn't look like his bed has a butt. That's all I can see. It's got a booty bed. A bed booty. (laughs) 
Al moved his right foot up and down. A bump on the right moved up and down. One of those bumps is moving, said Al. Al moved his left foot up and down. The bump on the left moved up and down. The other bump is moving, cried Al. Al pulled all of the covers off his bed. The bumps were gone. Al could see at the bottom of the bed. All Al could see at the bottom of his bed were two feet. But now I am cold, said Al. I will cover myself with the blankets again. As soon as he did, he saw the same two bumps. Those bumps are back, shouted Al. Bumps, bumps, bumps. I will never sleep tonight. Al jumped up and down on top of his bed. Where are you? What are you? He cried. With a crash and a bang, the bed came falling down. Al ran down the stairs. He sat in his chair near the fire. I will let those two strange bumps sit in my bed, all by themselves, said Al. Let them grow as big as they wish. I will sleep right here, where I am safe. And that is what he did. Now, come on, guys. That's ridiculous. You know, you know this, this right here, the first story, I didn't really have much of a moral for you other than... I mean, don't open your door to strangers, I suppose. But this one... Clearly... Clearly, this is the kind of thing where we need to understand that... We understand that it's important not to let fear control us. Not to let fear drive us. Not to give in to fear. Fear is not... What should control us. We have what it takes. We have the ability to overcome fear. And you see, he could have slept in his nice warm bed. When you let fear control you, you don't, you don't, you give up the things that, that you really want. You give up the things that, that could be so great. And instead, you go and you, you live in a situation where it's not the best that it could be uh, just because of fear, just because of two imaginary bumps in your bed. <clears throat> Tear water tea. Al took the key... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I apologize. Al took the kettle out of the cupboard tonight. I will make tear water tea, he said. He put the kettle on his lap. Now, said Al, I will begin. Al sat very still. He began to think of things that were sad. Chairs with broken legs, said Al. His eyes began to water. Songs that cannot be sung, said Al, because the words have been forgotten. Al began to cry, a large tear rolled down and dropped into the kettle. Spoons that have fallen behind the stove and are never seen again, said Al. More tears dropped down into the kettle. Books that cannot be read, said Al, because some of the pages have been torn out clocks that have stopped said Al with no one near them to wind them up Al was crying many large tears or Al was crying many large tears dropped into the kettle mornings nobody saw because everybody was sleeping sobbed Al mashed potatoes left on a plate he cried because no one wanted to eat them and pencils that are too short to use. Al thought about many other sad things. He cried and cried. And soon the kettle was all filled up with tears. There, said Al, that does it. Al stopped crying. He put the kettle on the stove to boil for tea. Al felt happy as he filled his cup. It tastes a little bit salty, he said. But tear water tea is always very good. 
Now, I know you might think that here I'm going to say, don't cry about stuff that doesn't matter. Well, that's a valuable thing to learn, to know, and to understand. It's okay to cry. And you notice at the end of the crying, he realized something. He said, hmm, you know what? I feel good. And so it is with crying that sometimes after you have cried, you've cried your tears and you're done, you feel better. You say, ah, you know what? I, I, I feel better right now. This is, this is what happens. <clears throat> Upstairs and downstairs. Al's old house had an upstairs and a downstairs. There were 20 steps on the stairway. Some of the time, Al was upstairs in his bedroom. At other times, Al was downstairs in his living room. When Al was downstairs, he said, I wonder how my upstairs is. When Al was upstairs, he said, I wonder how my downstairs is getting along. I am always missing one place or the other. There must be a way, said Al, to be upstairs and to be downstairs at the same time. Perhaps if I run very, very fast, I can be at both places at once. Al ran up. Uh, sorry, Al ran up the stairs. I am up, he said. Al ran down the stairs. I am down, he said. Al ran up and down the stairs faster and faster. Al, he cried, are you downstairs? There was no answer. No, said Owl, I am not downstairs because I am upstairs. I am not running fast enough. Owl shouted. Owl, he shouted, are you upstairs? There was no answer. No, said Owl, I am not upstairs because I am downstairs. I must run even faster. Faster and faster and faster, cried Owl. Owl ran upstairs. Forgot to pause those. Welcome to the Double O Donut Club. Faster, 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 cried Owl. Owl ran upstairs and downstairs all evening, but he could not be in both places at once. When I am up, said Owl, I am not down. When I am down, I am not up. Owl I am is very tired. Owl sat down to rest. He sat on the tenth step because it was a place that was right in the middle. Well, let me say this then. That was nothing but an exercise in futility. Unless, of course, he had run faster than the speed of sound. But what he did do was realize that it was a waste of energy to go running back and forth and back and forth just to try and do something that could not be done. It's better to put your efforts towards something else. All right, it is the last of the five short stories. Owl and the Moon. <clears throat> One night, Owl went down to the seashore. He sat on a large rock and looked out at the waves. Everything was dark. Then a small tip of the moon came up over the edge of the sea. Owl reached the moon, or Owl watched the moon. It climbed higher and higher into the sky. Soon the whole round moon was shining. Owl sat on the rock and looked up at the moon for a long time. If I am looking at you, moon, then you must be looking back at me. We must be very good friends. The moon did not answer, but Owl said, I will come back and see you again, Moon. But now I must go home. Owl walked down the path. He looked up at the sky. The moon was still there. It was following him. No, no, Moon, said Owl. It is kind of you to light my way. But you must stay up over the sea where you look so fine. 
Owl walked on a little further, he looked at the sky again. There was the moon, coming right along with him. Dear moon, said Owl, you really must not come home with me. My house is small, you would not fit through the door, and I have nothing to give you for supper. <clears throat> Owl kept on walking. The moon sailed after him, over the tops of the trees. Moon, said Owl, I think that you do not hear me. Owl climbed to the top of a hill. He shouted as loudly as he could, Goodbye, moon! The moon went behind some clouds. Owl looked and looked. The moon was gone. It is always a little sad to say goodbye to a friend, said Owl. Owl came home. He put on his pajamas and went to bed. The room was very dark. Owl was still feeling sad. All at once, Owl's bedroom was filled with silver light. Owl looked out the window. The moon was coming from behind the clouds. Moon, you have followed me all the way home. What a good, round friend you are, said Owl. Then Owl put his head on the pillow and closed his eyes. The moon was shining down through the window. Owl did not feel sad at all. Well, this has been story time with Double O Kills. And that was Owl at Home. Five short stories.